there, I'm Michelle Martin, and you're watching The Red Booth Show. Hi, welcome to The Red Booth Show. I'm your host, Kimberly Q. On tonight's episode, I have actress Michelle Martin, who's here to talk to us about her new movie that's coming out soon. So come and join us. So hello, Michelle. Hello, Kimberly. Thank you for joining me on the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. This yes. is cute. <laughs> I you. love this because I love everything vintage. So. I know. I saw that. And I think that's really uh, a cool thing about your look and your sort of whole vibe that you have Aww, going thanks, on. Thanks. Thanks. Well, it's the only one I got. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I just, I, I love old movies. I love that time period. I sometimes feel like I was born in the wrong time. And um, people then, I don't know, there was just a, a mystery and a beauty that, you know, it's not as evident today, but we still have our own thing. <laughs> Definitely. I, um, I love how much everybody sort of had pride in their outfits and their clothing more so. I guess, well, yeah. I guess nowadays people do too, but it's a little more casual. Well, they thought about it. They really did. And they came up in, I'm going to get all nerdy about this now, but they came up in the studio system. So they actually created a look. Well, like we all know Marilyn Monroe mm -hmm. created Marilyn Monroe. But I recently played Natalie Wood in a play, and it was just so interesting for me. I read all of her biographies, and the studio system was interesting. They started them so young, and they had to train, and they had to really be aware of, I mean, not presentation, not being fake or anything like that, but how to hold yourself as, you know, a representative of what we do. It, it was a craft. So, yeah, it's not like, I won a beauty contest, now I'm an actor. So. They would become, <laughs> like, groomed and, like, everything, you know? They did. They did. In a, in a different way than now. I mean, still, But they also controlled them too much, I think. They did. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, they, the studios had them locked in. To, to crazy contracts and they couldn't get out. I mean, much in the same way, probably kind of like the music industry and Disney, some still have that same kind of thing going on, but not to the extent they did then. So no, I'm I think they were even more, about that they were really period. involved in like your personal life back, mm -hmm. you know? Anyways, we, were, we need to talk about you though. Oh, we're okay. here to talk about you. <laughs> so, so you are a, an actress that has been in um, many different projects and yes. I thought it would be fun to hear about some of your latest, you know, adventures and, and films okay. that you've been working on. Yeah, so I've been extremely busy. This is probably the first the first year, year and a half, I can say that I am really a working actress. And I've been working since I was 14 and started in regional theater and uh, went to school at the Royal Central School in London and studied and then came out here. And you know, like every actor, you know, took lots of different jobs and struggled. And I was very lucky early on to start working and working with people who were much better than me. So those people have been very wonderful for me in my career. And so in the last year and a half, oh, it's been a busy year and a half. So I played Natalie Wood at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival with Sean Cronin and did a little movie that's out um, on iTunes called Blue, a festival winner about a girl who falls in love with a boy with a rare skin disorder. His skin is actually blue. And it's a beautiful little film, an allegory for racism and the idea that, you know, two people can save each other's life and that love matters. I but like that. I do too. <laughs> I love that idea. So, yeah, each part that I've taken, I've been so lucky to get to explore humanity. I think that's what we do, and I've learned so much. I don't know, I approach acting maybe a little differently in that way that I... I'm more attracted to the person that I'm playing. And um, so I did that, and that kind of launched this last couple years, which have been pretty busy, thank God. That's, Knock on wood. That's awesome. Yeah. As an actor, you think every job's your very last job. At least I do. Maybe everybody doesn't, but I do. 
And um, so I just played Little Red Riding Hood in uh, a horror thriller called Howl. That's perfect for you. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you guys know this, but Michelle is like a little bit of a of a pint size actress. Yes. She's cute and I'm super tall compared to you, but yeah. I'm actually the abnormal one in the in the acting no, industry. No, no, I'm 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 joking with everyone. I'm five foot two and for some reason they always cast me with guys who are like six seven. I don't know why, because I the rumor is all the men are short in Hollywood, except for the ones I work with. So <laughs> I, I'm going to write a book called Acting on an Apple Crate. Nice. By Michelle Martin. Yeah. <laughs> My, <laughs> but yeah, there's, um, I think, I think you're fine. I mean, you're gorgeous. <laughs> you're, you're a beautiful woman. No, I just mean Tell, it's, yeah. it's good because you are able to, to match with a lot more actors when you're, you when would you're think, a little bit. You would hurt. think, I'm waiting for those actors. They've right? been telling me, where are the short guys? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Can we trade places? Could we? Because is... <laughs> yeah, let's do it. For one day, let's trade lives. That would be good. That'd be fun. That'd be fun. I'd love that. Let's do that right now. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kimberly. I'm here with Michelle Martin. And... <laughs> that was good. Yeah, so I played Little Red Riding Hood. It was actually my first film that I took on as a director. And I was talking... Yes. Okay, we have to take a break. Okay. When we come back, I really want to hear the story about Alrighty. how you were a director. Oh, awesome. Okay, good. Okay. We'll be right back with actress Michelle Martin. That's me, not her. <laughs> okay, and welcome back to the Red Booth Show. And I'm here with Michelle Martin. Hello. Hello. <laughs> so Michelle okay. actually directed um, her recent project, which is yes. about Little Red Riding Hood. Which you play Little Red Riding Hood. I do. And it's called Howl. It's called Howl. And it's not my most recent project. It was probably, it was a crazy winter. So I decided on my hiatus from uh, my little TV show where I play, I'd say the Sybil of Robots. It's a very interesting show. On my time off. And so which is, which show, which is? That's called Emily 2410. Mm. And I play a humanoid companion who is evolving. Or like I like to think of it, she's a woman. <laughs> you know, she's, um, you know, people ask, how did you play it? How would you play an android? How would you play a robot? I said I played her more human than human because they're programmed so purely emotionally. Like everything she was feeling, it was almost like a child. Everything she was feeling was for the first time, even though she had the world's knowledge at her fingertips, emotions. I don't want to t tell too much because it's coming out this winter. So anyway, I had some time off. That's exciting. I, yeah, it is. I had some time off, and instead of taking a vacation, I directed a movie. <laughs> of course you would, because people who love yeah. this industry, who are really artists, that's what we love doing. Yeah, I we love really it. love it. It's my drug of choice. You know, <laughs> being creative is everything to me. And I figure when I have an idea, if I can do it, I bought my own drone. I got really into wow. it. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I own a drone. I would never have thought that I would ever say those words. But yeah, it was wonderful because I got to see, since I've acted in so many projects since I was 14, doing theater and film and television, I got to see what it was like from the other side. And I may never direct again, but I have so much respect now. Not that I didn't before. I was always very respectful of the crew. I know a lot of actors come on, it's like, oh, it's all about me. But I never felt that way. But now even more so, I know it's like juggling cats. Yeah. Directing a movie is like juggling cats. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot. So I had that experience. I think. I think I did a respectable job. I know there's still so much more I could learn, but I love the story and I wanted to tell it. And uh, my friend who directed me in a little indie blue that I was telling you about, I brought it to him to direct it. And he said, I think, Michelle, you have this vision. You should direct it. And that was so scary. And so I did it because I was scared. That's you. That's wow. kind of me. Yeah, you're <laughs> like, oh, it scares me. It so. scares me. So, so. I want to try. That's I love it. Yeah. I'm kind of the same way. I know. <laughs> well, I think that, well, like we were talking about earlier, I always say life is short. 
I'm shorter. <laughs> and it's true, though. Life is so short. So if there's something you want to do at the end of your life, it's better not to regret that you tried it. Even if I failed miserably, you know, even if no one likes this movie, I did it. I tried, you know. So then I... That's an amazing accomplishment. A lot of people haven't made anything like that. So, you know, it's that you did it. You have gone and you've created something and I'm sure it's well, we'll wonderful. S- we'll see. <laughs> Well, you have your you have your acting experience, which I think obviously helps a lot with directing because then mm-hmm. you can think with all of the scenes and how yes. you want to set them up. And I think, yeah, as an actor's director, I certainly understand actors, and I brought on people that I've worked with before, like Kenny Johnson from Bates Motel and Sons he was of on my show. Kenny was here. Yes, I've had oh him my on my gosh. show. Well, Kenny's played my dad and. Two movies, in Blue and in Howl. Really? And his daughter plays the eight-year-old version of me in this film as well. Really? It's a very twisted Grimm's fairy tale, not to give too much away, but uh, it's different than any Little Red Riding Hood you've ever seen before. It's a very adult Little Red Riding Hood. So Kenny has been on board since day one. Um, Like I said, I've been surrounded by such wonderful people who I can... I feel now that are truly my friends and artists that I can call up and say, hey, I have this idea, you want to join me? And they're there. I mean, on his day off from doing SWAT, he would come and shoot my little basement, you know, which I painted red and had crucifixes up and (laughs) went to Lowe's and I said, "Um, I need chains. I need some crucifixes and some chains. And (laughs) they turned me into the police. No. (laughs) (laughs) And some duct tape. Yeah, some duct tape. I'm it's perfectly above board. And you're all like, you're like this. I'm a filmmaker. She's like, yes. she's like five feet tall. Very innocent. Um, I just have some people locked Do up. Do you in have my... C4? Yeah. <laughs> I just, I'm building a prison in my basement. Yeah. Totally normal. That's where yeah. I keep all the men. Yeah. yeah. I'm yeah. Just kidding. So speaking of Kenny, well, he won't be around now. <laughs> um, yeah. So he's been wonderful and. Um, it's an incredible thing to find out no matter what level people get to they really are still interested in the art and helping the next generation you know I, that's been my experience I've had been really lucky so then I just did a little comedy and uh, another thriller up in the mountains that we're finishing called The Reservation which was based I think on a 90s film which was The Relic and I play a young archaeologist the Penelope and right. Miller role Wow. Yeah, so I'm just, thank God I'm working. That's how I feel every day I wake up and think, oh my gosh. It's so cool. I'm working. It's, it, it, as an actor, it's just, that's it, you know? I don't even think about, what well, would this happen or this award? I just think, thank goodness, I'm not unemployed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, we have to take a break. Okay. We'll be right back Alrighty. with Michelle Martin. <laughs> And welcome back to The Red Booth Show. I'm here with actress Michelle Martin. Hello. Hello. <laughs> We're back again. That's right. Yes. Now, you um, have finished directing this film, and you were talking about how you went and painted your basement. And I did. You my, did it with my, Kenny Johnson. Mm-hmm. What's up, Kenny, by the yeah. way? Yeah. Hey, Kenny. <laughs> um, Kenny is an amazing actor. So, yeah, he, he came on board this. I just had this idea about toying with the idea that you know, the Little Red Riding Hood story, I don't want to give too much away, but the girl is always the victim. So my idea was, what if Little Red Riding Hood, it was a little twisted and grims kind of idea. Ooh. Yeah, and Kenny loved it. He was played my dad in a little indie called Blue that won quite a few awards. It was a beautiful story about a boy with blue skin I was right. telling you about. So Kenny and I had worked together before, and he's just one of these incredible artists that on his day off, He was filming SWAT, and he only has one day off. He came and shot in my basement, (laughs) and up at Mammoth and Big Bear. We shot it in pieces because all of us, I shot around people's schedules because we didn't have a lot of money and a lot of time. His little daughter, Angelica Scarlett, plays me at eight years old. He calls her Jelly, right? Jelly, yeah, it's Jelly. That's That's cute. And I made her, she was wooed in by the fact that Little Red Riding Hood, of course, and that we had matching clothes. That nice. was part of how I got her seduced into the role. <laughs> she's eight. Yeah. You know, she's amazing. She, the apple fell near the tree with her and Kenny. She's so good and so sweet and down to earth just like him. Yeah, so 
yeah, I've been so lucky that I can call on people that I've worked with, and I guess they liked working with me and, you know, get to continue making movies, hopefully. Well, yeah. definitely. And yeah. now you have another movie that you're going to go shoot, right? So can you I tell do? us about that one? I do. It's a, an action film, kind of like a Run, Lola, Run, V for Vendetta type of thing in the UK. It's post-apocalyptic UK. I'll Luke Goss is playing the male lead. I'm playing the female lead. He's playing, well, I don't want to give too much away. No, I better not say that. Yes, tell us, <laughs> tell us, tell us all. He's my dad. Oh. Yeah, and so it's an um, incredibly different role for me, and that's why I wanted to take it on. Again, when I'm scared of something, I want to do it. She's uh, certainly not the girl next door or a fairy tale princess or anything like I usually get offered or play. So I was very challenged by the role when I read it, and so incredible for women it's a very strong female role and um, so she's kind of like Hunger Games she's trained for a certain Fighting. job mm -hmm. mm. and the people that she who trained her you know she has to basically take the people down that she thought were her family her entire life so it's a lot of action my booty's bruised right now from doing all this <laughs> I've been tossed around the things we do for what we love it's insane. Did it's, you have to like train? Like yeah, how? I've been training. I mean, I, I may die <laughs> at, at, at any point. I'm like, okay, if I die now, just know I was happy doing what I love to do because there's always a moment in the training where I'm like, this is not going to go well for me. You're like, <laughs> my body keeps getting spun around. And... I'm like, I don't think my body is supposed to do that. Luke is an incredible, you know, he did blade. And uh, uh, he took over Death Race from Jason Stratham. So he's a veteran action. I'm with veteran action actors. And then me. And so, then they're like, you have to learn to do. Oh, my gosh. To, and they have to don't. Learn how to take a punch and like all that stuff. And they like don't how, pull any punches. I don't know anything about. In fact, I'm going to have a yeah. stunt lady on the show. And I, Are I, you? Yes. It's very interesting. Oh, it's very interesting because mm -hmm. I, I don't think I have a stunt person who's going to play me. I wish we had that kind of budget. But. I'm my own stunt person, so I do have to learn how, how to make it look authentic. And I'm about that as an actor, really creating authentic characters. So I wanted to do it. They offered. We can have someone come in. I said, no, I really want to do this. You know, it's something I haven't What's done. one of the craziest things you've had to do so far? Well, I, well, a couple things. I'm scared to death of heights. Scared to death of heights. And... Um, I'm doing an adaptation of A Doll's House with Sir Ben Kingsley. They had me on, and I'm, and I'm a terrible driver. I'm the worst driver you've ever driven with in your life. Like you're taking your <laughs> life, you're taking your life in your, <laughs> in your own hands if you drive with me. So they had me driving on an icy bridge. They had the wheel of the car taped where it would only go to the right. They had a gazillion dollar, Jeffrey Kimball who shot Top Gun, all these, his equipment is glued to the thing, the car. Yeah, it's called a car. <laughs> That's how bad of a driver. <laughs> they had this glued to the car, the camera, zillion dollar camera, cardboard, I could only go a certain way, sleeting, snow, and I had to go over a bridge, get out, and hang off the bridge, and I thought, this is it. <laughs> this is it. I wrote letters home. I love you. Uh, you know, just know that I did what I love. <laughs> oh I'll, be, I'll be at the bottom of the Ohio River if you need to find me. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> that was scary. Wow. And then this summer I did a comedy, and that was just gruesome. That was one of those moments where it was great comedy i love doing it but i was in joshua tree during the heat wave this summer in august it was 120 degrees in the shade i was wheeling a coca-cola machine in a leather jacket in the and that's where i questioned what did i do with my life <laughs> like could i have gone to law school <laughs> oh is it God. too late <laughs> well we have to take another quick break okay. but we'll be right back with michelle martin and we'll get to hear the rest of the story yay <laughs> <laughs>
And welcome back to the Red Booth Show. I'm here hanging out with Michelle Martin. And we have a lot of fun. Yes, and uh, you know, I just have to tell you guys, like, I have to cut off my guests for the commercial break, and I hate it. I really hate it. And sometimes it's really awkward. Aww. And I love to hear the rest of her story. And so I I, love I'm sorry that you died in the desert. Yeah, I well, I didn't that. die in the desert. Okay, well. I think part of me still there. You almost there. died in the desert. Just... <laughs> I just lost some weight in the desert, I think. No, you know what? I It's good to cut me off because I can just ramble on. <laughs> well, I wanted to hear your story about how you got into acting because, okay. I mean, you've obviously created a wonderful career. I know you were in theater and, yes. you know, you're working with some, some great people doing TV and doing, you know, bigger and bigger films, which is fantastic. So how did you first become an actress? Like, what, what started it all? Um... Well, I accompanied a friend of mine to her audition, and believe it or not, no one's going to believe this who knows me. I was very, very shy. Who, where did that go? I don't know. But I was very shy and had a little bit of a stutter, and I, I heard Emily Blunt talking about that. And so the lady who was auditioning, all these kids were like, it's the sound of music. They're singing, they're lined up, they've got like stage moms, they have headshots, and I'm standing there in the corner like, you know, a regular kid. And the theater director saw me, and I guess I was exactly what she had in mind for Brigitte, the little nine-year-old, like, you know, spunky girl or whatever. And um, she asked me to audition. I said, no, 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 I have a cold, which... I acted very badly. You didn't she, have a cold. No, she didn't you believe were just, me. You were just nervous. I was nervous. I was Aww. super shy, Aww. really shy. And then she said, I'll tell you what, I have a feeling about you. And I said, okay, is that good? <laughs> and she had me come on onto the stage and gave me the dialogue. And I remember like this, like the lights came on me and all of a sudden I, I felt empowered. I didn't feel like anyone was there. And I looked at the character, read a little bit about her, and said the lines. And I remember the first line I said was, I'm Brigitte, she's Louisa, I'm nine years old, you're smart, and that's the ugliest dress I've ever seen. And that was it. I got the role, and I got the bug for acting, and I just didn't stop. I did regional theater and studied at the, uh, the Royal Central School for Dramatic Arts in London. And uh, I didn't know really where my career would take me, I thought I was just going to do theater. And an agent in Los Angeles saw me in a production and I came here and then, you know, I'm doing a lot of indie film and that's kind of like theater. Because it's it really is, because you're comrades. You're in it. You're like in the trenches. I love indie film because you're there for like 12, 16 hours a day. It's much like the theater. So, and, yeah. So I just keep going like yeah. a little engine that could. That's yeah. so cool. Yeah. I mean, uh, the truth that is that a lot of the films that people make here, the indie short films, I think are filled with so much passion, mm -hmm. passion for the project. I mean, yes. like to even make them. Yeah. It I've, takes never, people... I've never made a short film. Mm. Uh, I know a lot of people get their start with short films. I went right into the... Into feature. Yeah, it's kind of okay, well, like... I mean indie films. Yeah, yeah. Indie, yeah, indie it, films are short films yeah, sort of thing. It's kind of like I walked yeah. before I crawled. I just stood up and walked. And I know that's kind of silly. I should have done it. You're right. I should have done a short no, film. No, no. That's not what I meant. That's No, I'm just, I'm just referring to yeah. like the independent yes. projects because yes. it, whether it's feature length or not, Absolutely. it takes so much to, um, to pull it off and make it happen. Oh, anything you make. Everybody that's involved involved has to like really kind of be you know behind the project yeah. like really I know so. you you have everybody's in it together I love that like my first production I was baking the muffins making the coffee I miss that now you know with the television show I just shot um they, I was just waiting in my trailer or when I did last rampage with Robert Patrick I was had a trailer Robert and, Patrick we just had him on the show oh too. my gosh you know my <laughs> Apparently. We lovingly call <laughs> each other the Hicks of Hollywood. Really? <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have said that. That's so yeah. funny. But I'm going to have to say that, too. He's a great actor. He's fantastic. He's such a great actor. So I was in The Last Rampage, Molly Quinn and uh, Heather Graham and Robert. And that was a great experience. And um, everybody's just been wonderful. He came up after and he said, you're you're good, little girl. You. you can act. I said, thank you. That's good news. <laughs> I have 
no fallback plan, you know, and no savings. So <laughs> you're like, this is it. Yeah, this, this is, is it. This so is I what hope I'm doing. I hope it works out. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> So, okay, good. So now you have done features, you've done mm-hmm. theater, you were talking about how you got started yes. when you were going into school and you did the first play. Yes, the first play. So I was 11 playing a nine-year-old and, you know, because as you pointed out, I'm not the tallest person in the world. I was able to play. I used to joke and say I was the only one that could drive myself to the audition. It was all <laughs> like me and mom stage moms and teenagers and I came very close to getting a fairly big Disney show and that and it was heartbreaking at the time but now I'm very glad that I didn't get it why because well my career would have gone in a very different way and I like I like the way my career has you know kind of a slow burn and doing serious work more dark sort of stuff than Disney right right yeah you know I well, I do comedy as well but I I think I like to take on characters that um, have a lot of depth. You know, I see myself more as potentially, not now, of course, in the future, an Amy Adams type who's able to transition from, you know, being Cinderella to being some very sharp objects. Right. I mean. I actually haven't seen that show yet. And nocturnal animals, that kind of thing. She's, She's taken on, she was the girl next door. So I kind of early on just had this idea for who I wanted to be. And people always ask me, you know, younger people say, you know, what is your advice? And that's kind of my advice, is to decide early on. It's not wrong to decide, hey, I want to be a Disney star and sing, but I knew that wasn't my route. Mm. Yeah. Even though I had the look they liked, you know, but something was always wrong with me. Like, what's wrong with her? <laughs> Nothing is she's wrong a, with you. She's a dark child. <laughs> There's something a little wrong with that girl. Well, I think it's cool because you directed your, fir- your first feature and it was... Um, it's very twisted. A, it is a twisted story. Yeah, so. it hasn't come out yet. I'm still So editing. that's the real her on the inside. I'm just kidding. <laughs> They're all the real me is the oh, thing. Yeah. They're well, all... you get to play so many different characters, yeah. which is really cool. They're all living inside there. <laughs> That's the fun thing. Well, we have to wrap it up. Um, if there's any last bit of advice you'd like to give anyone out there who wants to become an actress, I'd love to hear it. Oh, my gosh. Well, and I don't mean this in a bad way, but if you can do anything else, do it. I mean, if you have a passion for anything else, but if this is what you want to do more than anything, also do it. Because it's so hard, and there are so many challenges, but it's worth it if you really love it. And I always ask myself the question, like, if someone told me, you'll never, ever get paid as an actor again, I would still do community theater. I'm an actor, you know, not just an actor for fame or money or whatever so if that is who that person is you have to do it that's I guess got very dark and deep but no, that's, that's the <laughs> thank you that's welcome. that's very good that's I, I believe that's true <laughs> yes I do too <laughs> well thanks so much for being on the show thank you Kimberly yes I appreciate I, it I hope everybody will be tracking with your career and following your new movies coming out and me too this fall and next year as well I hope Yay. And all. <laughs> okay, awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Hey guys, here I am with Tony the Movie Guy, and he has his podcast, which you can always check out anywhere online. Pretty much. Plays podcast. Apple Podcasts mainly, but yeah. pretty much anywhere else as well. Cool. And also, you're going to be telling us about the upcoming movies that's coming out. That's right. It's always my pleasure to be a guest and do a segment telling you about the films coming out. So here's what you can check out in the theaters now and movies coming out very soon. Um, We've got some interesting ones. Uh, There's one called The Favorite. Did you ever see The Lobster? That really strange Swedish movie. I saw the trailer, but I didn't actually watch it. It's a good movie. So The Favorite is the next film from this uh, director. Uh Uh-huh. His name is Jorgos Lanthimos. And uh, he's a really trippy artistic director. Um, But it's with Emma Stone, Rachel Weisz, and it's about two cousins who fight to be the favorite of the queen. 
it looks really bizarre. And anyone who's seen The Lobster and his other films, they'll know what I'm talking about. That looks about. really strange. Yeah. And I'm, if, but if she, if Emma Stone's in it, then it's got to right. be pretty amazing. I, I think he's like she a picks big, good stuff. He, oh, absolutely she does. Uh, he's a big art house director. Very artsy. But check out uh, The Favourite. And then, um, God bless her, I, I have a soft spot for Jennifer Lopez. She only does films every couple of years. She's very busy. She's got another one of her rom-coms coming out. It's called Second Act. Um, again, I, I like J-Lo, so I'll, I'll watch that. Um, and That'll then, be fun. Exactly. And then the next one is a big Oscar movie. Huge Oscar buzz. It's called Mary Queen of Scots. And it's with um, Saoirse Ronan as the Mary Queen of Scots and Margot Robbie as Queen Elizabeth as they oh, fight yeah. for the throne. Okay, I've seen this. This right. looks pretty well, yeah, intense. It looks, well, it's a huge historical epic, but yeah. also both of those actresses, they were both nominated for Best Actress last year. They've yeah. been front runners for Oscars uh, for quite, quite some years now. So they're very hot actresses um, in both respects, uh, fantastically talented. Yeah, and gorgeous. Um, yeah, they really yeah. are in, in every way. So I'm really excited to see that. And then the last one is called Under the Silver Lake. And again, this is another trippy film. It's from the director of It Follows. I don't know if you ever saw that. It's a really trippy horror movie that came out a few years ago, very acclaimed. Uh, it's with Andrew Garfield, who I love. I think he's a fantastic British actor. Um, and it's about him searching for a girl who goes missing. Um, again, if you watch the trailer, you'll see what I mean. It's called Under the Silver Lake. It looks really bizarre. That's what we've That's got. That's cool. I love those kind of movies. Yeah. So I'll be happy to check it out. It's always funny having you on the show because you just know so much about everyone about every movie and the actors in them and who directed them and everything like you really are an encyclopedia of movies yeah well i appreciate you that you put me to shame every time no. so don't ask me if i've seen these because i'll be job. like oh <laughs> <laughs> well remember i'm a motor mouth as well so i could literally go on for hours which i do on my podcast <laughs> but it's always a pleasure to be a guest on your show thanks so much yeah thanks for telling us about the movies that are coming up yeah that's what you guys can see see you next time